My name is Harry. Some friend or foe call me Barnacle Harry, which I take as a sign of respect most of the time. Others, if I would allow myself that some have treated me with something like affection, call me Barnabas. I am a gadabout, an occasional gambler, a consumer and purveyor of fine wine and sherry, an art dealer, but at my core I am what some would once call a pirate. By trick of fate, I also am a sanguisuge, a neck-nasty descendant of Dracul, also known as a vampire. Immortal and blessed to be cursed, forever middle-aged, someone I knew once called us. The reason I am recounting my story is that recently a young person has come into my life. My days of preying on the vulnerable long past, I have been reformed of my nastier ways, having dedicated my life in the last several hundred years to different pursuits guided by someone, though now regrettably gone, who will forever hold my attention. Being good was never very interesting to me, you see, and when I became a vampire in the late 16th, I was like a kid in a candy store, not discerning one delicious snack from another, never stopping to think if I should not drink this or eat that, walk down this dark alley or gamble my life for my savings on a whim. My vice and my weakness has always been drink. And my life has almost been ended on more than one occasion by falling asleep at the bottom of a particularly good barrel of rum or wine or sherry, especially sherry. You could say I made enemies with glee, often overstaying my welcome and relying on my ability to withstand great pressure and force. My skin is riddled with scars, and it's a miracle I'm not missing a finger or toe or limb for that matter, though perhaps there's a reason for that. I am made of pretty tough stuff. But gory details aside, I had not known the thing some call the connective tissue of affection or care, or dare I say compassion until... I met her. She found me at my lowest, and coincidentally at the edge of a precipice that certainly would have been my last dance. I was the dull thud of a hammer, and, and she was the sharpest slice imaginable. I was mayhem, and she was calculated chaos so beautiful it could have been rehearsed and recorded like a symphonic ballet. I remember the wooden beams, how they detonated in a time spark and bowed down like a curtain falling down on a play. Somehow a bottle fell off a table and scampered to my boot, and I picked it up and enjoyed it as this next glorious act began. I sat at the edge of unconsciousness as incredulous. A dozen or so of my more menacing adversaries, men who no doubt had every right or financial reason to want me dead, looked upon the distinct and frankly attractive figure of a woman come into the frame, haloed by a theatrical effect of smoke and dust and light. At least that's how I remember it. I groaned that my bottle was nearly empty, but that I was too tired to lift a single finger to procure another one. But I was quickly assuaged and drank instead of this figure, and how her curls danced as methodical and sprite-like. She put each man down, cutting their strings like they were marionettes, almost in complete silence to the sound of their death rattles. At last, the head of the mercenaries charged at her, 
And like a tango, she took his charge, dipped him down, almost as a seduction, and that is when I knew she was one of our own. For the first time in my life, as she looked towards me, her fangs dripping with fresh blood, I can admit I felt for the first time an attraction to someone close enough to be called romance. That was when my life turned. Previously, I had fed on whomever and whatever. But after that, I was, due to no small part of her influence, dedicated to something I would be queasy to admit lay in some sphere of ethics or morality. I would permit this line of thinking simply as an admission to what I would only realize years after her untimely death that I have only known something close to what would be called affection by virtue of her coming into my life and saving my life more times and more ways than one. She had a twin brother as well, who though I found him completely lacking every quality that she possessed, I kept close in that tiny secret room in my chest cavity as an extension of her. Perhaps this young person coming into my life filled a gap I should properly admit will never be filled. In any case, they have permeated a part of me that I thought would never reveal itself again. They have had me recount my days as a gentleman pirate. They have regaled in my exploits, gory as they sometimes are, without judgment. And they have asked for my assistance in ways that I never would have thought myself useful. They've also made me a tad nostalgic, which is why I am recounting all this to you now. There was a time when pirates ruled the sea, and adventure was enough for a man or a woman or vampire to dedicate their life to uncompromising living. But perhaps I'm being a little too high fancy. If you told me once I'd grow to be this soft, I would have taken it as playful affront and done more than just nibble on your neck. <laughs> Next time, I will tell you about her neck. But for now, I'm going to make myself another cup of tea. <laughs>